So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips about how to write response to reviewers document. Now for this document, uh, you really need to answer all questions from the reviewers, and I usually use this kind of template. So I start by thanking the editor and the reviewers for their constructive comments and for their uh, time they spend on reviewing your manuscript. Then I copy paste the first question from the reviewer as it is in the response to your document. Then I put my response to it. Then I copy paste the second question. Then I put my response to it. And I copy paste everything from reviewer one. Then I move to reviewer two and so on. Now everyone is busy and the reviewer, they don't want to spend five hours reading your paper. And usually when they receive your revised manuscript, it's been one or two months since they read your initial submission. So most of the time, they don't ever remember all the details of your initial paper. And sometimes they don't ever remember their questions. So it's really important that you make their life easy. It's really important that you become, that you are as clear as possible. So if you make a change in the paper based on one of the questions from the reviewers, make sure that you cite exactly where the change was made. So you could mention the page number, the line number, or even the paragraph number. Also, when you submit your revised paper, uh, submit a clean copy, and at the same time, submit another copy where the changes are highlighted, the major changes. Uh, so you could use the uh, track changes feature in Microsoft Word, or you could use any way of any other way of highlighting. Now, don't overdo it. So don't highlight the minor changes. So if you change the figure number, if you change the typo, you don't really need to highlight it, so it's fine. Now, there's really no page limit for the response to reviewer's document, and I personally like to add figures uh, if needed. Uh, you could add tables as well. But as a rule of thumb uh, that I usually follow, my response to each question should be on average as big as the question itself. So if the one of the questions from one of the reviewers is uh, five lines, uh, don't answer them with half a line. Uh, it just it might be perceived as uh, lack of respect. It could be perceived as... Uh, you are not taking the reviewer seriously. So answer him somewhere between maybe three to seven lines. Now this is very, very, very important. Uh, sometimes the reviewers, they question the novelty of your paper. Sometimes they question the contribution of your paper. So if you are 100% sure that your paper is correct and the contribution is good, in your response to reviewer's document, um, and instead of taking the approach where you question the knowledge of the reviewer and you try to explain for him why he is wrong and you are right, and it might be the case, you should take the approach where you question the presentation of your paper and you question that it might be the way that you presented your paper that led to the confusion on the reviewer's side. And I like to think of these reviewers as random people from the future readers of my papers. So they work in the same area, they should be able to understand the paper, but they don't necessarily work on the exact same problem that I'm working on. So if one of them thinks that the contribution is not good enough, um, it's most likely that I didn't, uh, for example, did a good literature review, that it confused them. And if I leave my paper as it is, 20 or 30 percent of the readers later on, they might actually think that my paper is not good enough. So make sure that you change your paper so that if someone else reads your paper later on, he will not have the same question. Now be polite, uh, be respectful, and be formal. Don't try to be funny, uh, don't try to make jokes. So even if the reviewer is tough on you, and he is irritating you, and you, are really, you feel that he's treating you unfairly, when you answer him, make sure that you are as friendly as you could, and that the language of your writings does not reflect somehow an angry feeling on your side. Because if the reviewer um, somehow senses that you're angry at him, uh, it might unconsciously affect his decision, even if he's trying to be fair. And you don't really want to get into a fight with the reviewer. I mean, if you get into a fight with him, he will most likely win, and your paper will just be rejected. Now, don't overdo it, and don't sound desperate, and don't sound artificially polite. So, for example, if the reviewer um, asks you to add the patient characteristics to the abstract, don't thank him for the insight. There's really no insight in there. 
Now be honest and acknowledge limitations. So sometimes the reviewers might ask you to add the limitation of your work in your revised manuscript. So if deep inside you, you know that the reviewer had a point and he's actually right, mention this limitation clearly and ambiguously in both your response to reviewer document, so in your answer to his question, and in the revised manuscript. And when the reviewers ask you to add a limitation to your paper, he really wants to accept your paper, but he just wants you to mention this in your paper. He doesn't want to reject your paper. Because if he wants to reject your paper, he will just reject it without mentioning this limitation. Well, he could mention the limitation, but he will be rejecting your paper and not ask you to resubmit again. So mention it, and it doesn't make your paper worse. Actually, the opposite. It makes your paper better, and it shows confidence that you have confidence in your work, and no one's work is perfect. Thank you very much, and uh, in my website you will see a sample of uh, response to your documents, so just feel free to download it. Thank you.